This lecture is on alkene nomenclature. You can go ahead and jot down this part of the board and this, these examples, and we'll get to the rest in a minute. <clears throat> to name alkenes, you number the longest alkene containing carbon chain, starting with the side that gives that alkene the lowest number. And then you're going to number substituents just like in alkanes. Now, these rules apply to just, you know, normal alkenes without any other highly prioritized functional groups. Later on, we'll see examples um, where alcohols are involved, and that'll change things because we'll have to use the alcohol rules as well. But so for these first two examples, we can go ahead and name them. <clears throat> if we look at this example here, we're going to number our chain to give the alkene the lowest number. So the longest alkene car containing chain is one, two, three, four, five carbons. If we number from this side, we first encounter the alkene at carbon number two. If we had numbered from this side, we would have first encountered it at carbon number three. So now we can just name the alkene. This is a five carbon chain, which would normally be a pentane. Since it's an alkene, we, chain, we drop the A and we replace it with an E, so this would be a pentene. And so this specifically is two pentene. Where that two describes the location of the alkene. Since we've got a methyl substituent on carbon number three, We have 3-methyl-2-pentene. This example is a little different. The longest carbon chain would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons long. However, that, doesn't in, that does not contain the alkene. And so we've got a number such that we include that alkene. And so we get this 7-carbon chain. So this, instead of being a heptane, would be a heptene. It's a one heptene. And then we've got a three carbon chain off carbon number three. So this is three propyl one heptene. Now also you'll find another acceptable way to put the number to describe the alkene is to insert that number in the actual parent chain name right before the ene. So for example, in this one over here, this could also be three methyl pent two ene. For simple alkenes, it makes sense to just put it out front. It flows a little better when you pronounce it. But this is also an acceptable name. And you could do the same thing over here. <clears throat> Now alkenes are special because there's not free rotation on account of that pi bond, then alkenes can be locked in two different conformations. A trans conformation where the, the bulkier groups are opposite on opposite sides of the molecule or further away from each other, or where they're in the on same sides of the molecule. Because these conformations are locked in place, they'll have different properties, different energies. And so cis-trans isomers are a type of stereoisomer. In order to name by the cis-trans method, which is not more commonly applied for complex molecules, but you simply just designate, in this example, our 2-butene would be trans-2-butene. You'll see this italicized if it's in print. Um, if you can't italicize, then you just underline it. Here we designate it cis-2-butene. Cis and trans system is only useful for very simple alkenes. Um, it gets complicated, and it's more difficult to use when the molecules have uh, more complex structure. And so for that, we use the EZ system. Essentially, E is like trans, 
um, because the, we will assign priorities and if those prioritized groups are on opposite sides of the molecule, that's E. And Z is kind of like cis, but Z will not always be cis and E will not always be trans if you compare the two schemes. And so we always just use this scheme exclusively for naming. Um, each bond, each group bonded to an alkene carbon is compared and then one is assigned a priority. Um, these priorities are assigned just like we assign them with the R and S system. Um, if those prioritized groups are on the same side, then it's Z. If the prioritized groups are on the opposite side, then it's E. And so we can go ahead and do this with these examples up here. And these will be very simple examples. What we need to do is look at each carbon of the alkene independently. So I'm just going to look at this carbon of this alkene. I'm going to compare a hydrogen to a carbon, just like we do in RNS. The carbon gets more priority over this hydrogen. So instead of assigning numbers, since we're just comparing two groups, I'm just going to put a little star there. And that tells me that that's a prioritized group. On the other side, again, we're comparing a hydrogen and a methyl group. And so carbon gets priority over hydrogen. I can see that my, my two prioritized groups are on opposite sides. And so this would be E2-butene. Over here, you can assign priorities the same exact way. You will assign priorities such that these two groups get the priority, and they're on the same side of the molecule. So this is Z. To butene. E and Z will always go in parentheses just like R and S do. So now we'll work through some more examples. So when you write these all down, we'll go through them. In this first example, we're focusing in on the alkene. It's the highest prioritized functional group. Halogens are very low priority, just like alkyl groups. And so we can number these carbons. We've got a 2-pentene. There'll be a 5-chloro-2-pentene. And now we have to decide E or Z. Well, since there's hydrogens here, they're the lowest priority. We know our priorities are the carbon chain groups. They're on the same side of the molecule, so that's Z. 
And since there's only one alkene, we know that Z must refer to this two pentene alkene. In the next example, now we've got a, a bit more complicated situation. We've got a one, two, three, four, five carbon alkene again, so it's still a two pentene. It's a five chloro pentene, but it's a two bromo as well. So that bromo group's going to change things. Because of that bromo group, bromine gets priority over carbon because it's higher atomic weight. Then on this side, where we have a hydrogen versus a carbon, carbon gets priority. So remember, you're only comparing the groups that are bonded to the same alkene carbon. So we compare bromine to carbon, and that's it for that side. Then we compare carbon to hydrogen, and that's it for that side. These prioritized groups are on opposite sides of the molecule. That's an E configuration. And so this is the appropriate name. Try these other, try this last example. Down here, our prioritized group would be the carbon versus the hydrogen. Up here, we've got a carbon versus a carbon. So we see what else is there, just two hydrogens. So we move down the line, carbon versus carbon. Then we get to carbon six versus this carbon out here. In this case, this carbon wins out because it's bonded to a carbon, whereas this one's only bonded to hydrogens. So this would be our prioritized group. We can see that our prioritized groups are on the same side. So this one's Z. <clears throat> Once we throw alcohols into the mix, now alcohols are the highest prioritized group. So instead of numbering the longest carbon chain, including an alkene, we focus on the alcohol. And so the longest carbon chain in these examples will include both. But we're going to number such to, as to give the alcohol the lowest number. So this will be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In this specific example now, we're changing the parent name two ways. This is going to be not, not a hexane, it'll be a hexene all. We see we have two methyl groups and a bromo substituent. So this will be four bromo three three dimethyl. And now it gets tricky because we have to designate the position of the alcohol and the position of the alkene. In the name hexenol, ene comes before all. So four will designate the position of the alkene. So that four goes out in front but then one will designate the position of the all. So it has to go in this name. And so we have 4-bromo, 3-3-dimethyl, 4-hexene-1-all. Again, that's a 1, not an L. Last thing we do is assign E or Z. Methyl group gets priority over here compared to hydrogen. On this side, the bromo group gets priority over that carbon. So we have them on the same side. It's a Z situation. And that Z must refer to the alkene. <clears throat> Here's another example to try. 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll number in such a way to give the alkene a lower number because either way the alcohol would be on 4.
get 6, 6, dimethyl, 2, heptene for all. This one does not, um, you can't assign priorities because both items bonded here are hydrogens, and so E and Z does not apply. So E and Z won't always apply. We can do cyclic molecules as well. Typically, E or Z is not included in a cyclic molecule's name because the molecule cannot physically be trans or an E conformation. They're always Z conformations, so that's typically left out. But it's perfectly fine if you include it in the name, it's just not necessary. This would be cyclohexane, so it just becomes cyclohexene. With cyclos, we number We number the compound in such a way that both alkene carbons get low numbers. So for example, you would not number this one, then two for the methyl group, because that would give you a six down here. So your numbering scheme has to go this way to go through both alkene carbons first before you go to the substituent. three methyl one cyclohexene. It would be Z, but we don't have to include that in there. For this next one, it's a cyclohexene all. So we can apply what we did up here. We number first with the alcohol, then we go through the alkene, and then we get to our substituent. So this one would be four ethyl two cyclohexene one all.